we've now put together two possible solutions to the string reversal problem. Now I do want to look at one third solution. You might be sitting there thinking, Stephen, do we really need a third solution? You know, aren't the two that we have good enough? Well, to be honest, throughout this course, I want to usually show you multiple solutions to the same problem. Because inevitably, for some people, one type of solution is going to stick, and another one will not. In addition, as we look at these solutions, I'm going to usually be showing you some of the more complicated ways of solving a problem. Now, sometimes you do want to use a slightly more complicated way, just because it might show your interviewer that you kind of know what you're talking about. So this last solution is going to use a very complicated little array helper, but it's also going to make it very evident to your interviewer that you really know how to reverse a string. So let's give this last solution a shot. I'm going to start off by copying the second solution down to the bottom of the file and commenting it out. And then I'll delete the function body for our solution right here. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to take our string, we're going to turn it into an array by calling the split function on it, and then we're going to use the reduce helper. So the reduce helper is a method helper that was included with ES 5.1. We'll take a look at how it's used in just a second. So we'll first turn this thing into an array by calling string.split with an empty string, like so. And then we'll set up the reduce helper function. Reduce is used to take all the different values with an array and condense them all down to one singular value, which is essentially exactly what we're trying to do here. We want to take all the values within this array that we just created and condense them down to a single string value. Reduce takes two separate arguments. The first one is going to be an arrow function that I'll set up like so. And then the second argument is going to be a starting initial value for our function, which I'm going to pass in an empty string, like so. Now, whenever reduce runs, it's going to take this starting argument, it's going to pass it into this arrow function as the first argument, and then whatever gets returned from that inner function will be then used as the starting argument for every successive run of the function. In total, the function runs one time for every element within the array right here. So in other words, we can really picture that this first value or the first argument that is passed into reduce is our reversed string. So I will receive it as an argument named reversed. Then the second argument is the element or the character that we are currently operating on out of our array. And I'll receive that as an argument called character. Then the logic inside this function ends up being the exact same thing that it was with our for loop solution. So we're going to take our character that we're operating on right now, we will add it to the total reverse string, or the string that represents the reversed string that we were passed, and then return the result. So I will say return character plus reversed, like so. So this reduce call will yield a string that is the reversed form of the string that was passed in. So the last thing we have to do is make sure that we return the result. So I'm going to get my return keyword in there like so. All right, so let's look at our tests. It looks like everything is still passing. Fantastic. So this is definitely a solution that would work. The last thing that I would probably do here is to kind of simplify some of the syntax a little bit by using some knowledge of ES6. Again, this is a little improvement that is not necessary, but something that might kind of impress your interviewer, just to show that, yes, you are familiar with ES2015 and understand the differences in syntax. So one way that I could condense this function call right here down a little bit is to remove both the return statement and the curly braces. So I would remove the return statement. I would remove the curly braces. There's the other curly brace, and then I also don't need the semicolon here anymore. Finally, having the full word reversed in character is you know, a little bit long here, so I might choose to replace these variable names with simply uh, rev and char, like so. That's 100% you know, up to you, style preference, but it's something that I think still conveys their meaning, but really condenses down the line. All right, so looking at this as a one-line solution, it's still not quite as brief as the reverse function call with that first solution we did, 
but I think it's certainly a little bit more condensed down than the second solution where we use the for loop. So again, any three of these solutions works a-okay, 100% just fine. And of course, there are other solutions out there that we didn't even cover. Many different ways to solve this problem. However, if I wanted to really wow my interviewer, or at least make them think that I understood some advanced array helpers, like say, the reduce helper, then this is likely a solution that I would go with right here. Okay, so this is our first problem that we've gone through. Hopefully the three different solutions wasn't too tiring. Like I said, in general, I wanna show you multiple solutions just so you see different ways of solving a problem. So hopefully this first problem went along a-okay. Let's continue in the next section and start working on our next question.